something that probably never happens in the classroom. You're allowed to yell out one, something that you, that you saw, an emotion or something that you saw. Just yell it out. Oh, look at this. No one wants to talk, huh? Okay. Surprise. Nice. Weary. Oh, nice. That man does look like Abraham Lincoln. Yes. Curious. Scared. Annoyed. Ooh, good one. Happy. Disgusted. Pasty. Any others? I heard that. One more. Suspicious. Good. All right. So what I want to talk about today is what do we do when the unexpe unexpected or the strange happens to us? Because we all have different responses in that moment. Our response to the unexpected or to the strange, and you said some of these, right? So we might have a lot of curiosity, want to know more about what's going on. We might have some skepticism because we just don't know what is happening. Like, why is this person here? Why is this thing happening to me? Another one, I heard scared. I use the word fear. We can be really scared or fearful of what's happening. Again, because we don't have a lot of information to go on. We might even have some wonder or just some awe, like, oh, this is cool. There's something new happening. But we also could have some anxiety, even some stress associated with the unexpected. But what I want to talk about today is this idea that when the unexpected happens or the strange happens to us, there is an opportunity to learn a lot. So, I want you, and I'm going to give you another opportunity to think about this. But again, I want you to think for a minute about something that, something unexpected or strange that's happened to you uh, within the last six months. Because chances are something strange or unexpected happened. It could be a friendship. It could be an interaction. It could be an event, an experience. And I want you to think about what your initial response was to that thing, okay? And then when you have a chance, I want you to turn to your neighbor again and share that thing with them. Ready? Go. All right, hold those in the back of your head because we'll maybe come back to that a little bit more. But what I'd like to apply today for you is some of my own thinking about how we might learn in unexpected cases or in ex unexpected events or in strange circumstances. So I have a three-part plan in my head but it might, there might be a lot more steps to this than there actually is. But these are three things that help me when the unexpected happens. Let me talk through them with you. 
The first one is be okay with I don't know. For some reason in our world, we think that we need to know everything in order to engage with it. The reality is, is that if we can come to the unexpected with this openness, with this I don't really know everything about it, and I'm going to be okay with that, it allows us to be open to what potential learning could happen in that circumstance. Most of the time, I'm guessing your educators are trying to practice this with you in the classroom. They're trying to present you with something challenging, something unexpected, something strange, and then saying, be open to the possibility in what you can do there. It's the same with relationships. You shouldn't enter into relationships with friends, with your families, with a stranger, with thinking that you need to know everything about them before you enter into that. It's okay to say, I don't know everything. That's step one. Step two, shift from a right way to a possible way. Again, we often want to make sure that when we're engaging in relationships or we're trying to solve problems or we're trying to um, just negotiate our world as it's coming to us, that there's a specific right way. And if you talk to any adult in this room, they will tell you that there is not necessarily a right way, but there is multiple possible ways to everything that you encounter. So step away from the right way and open your mind to possible ways. That's step two. And then finally, change your relationship to the strange or the unexpected. And what I mean by that is that we have a tendency when the unexpected happens or the things that create anxiety or stress for us or fear, we tend to say, hey, I'll see you and walk away. But what I'm saying is, and this is what I teach all my undergrads who want to be educators, speech language pathologists, work in healthcare, basically any profession, is that when that fear or that anxiety comes to you, I say, run towards it. Because there's something to learn there. It's so easy to let fear overtake us and run away. But I ask us to run towards it. So I'm going to give an example. This might be slightly embarrassing for Cadence, but we'll see. Not really. So a few years ago, I decided to take up beekeeping. I just thought it would be interesting, okay? So a few summers ago, if you look, does this have a laser? You see that thing that looks like a disease on that tree? You see that? You wanna know what that is? That's a swarm of bees, thousands and thousands of honeybees showed up in our yard. And I had never caught a swarm before in my life. But I wanted those honeybees for myself. So, you see that guy in that little white suit up there? That's me doing something I'd never done before. So I applied these steps to this example. One, I was okay with, I have no idea how to do this. No idea. I knew I needed to put the suit on because I didn't want to get stung. But I really didn't know how to do it, how to get them in the box, how to do any of it. I also kind of just abandoned that there's any right way to do this because there's a bunch of bees on this thing and everything I had heard is that you just take your hands and shove them into a box. Sounds crazy, right? But that's what I guess you're supposed to do. So I went from a right way to whatever works, right? And then I really changed my relationship to the unexpected, to the strange. So I'm up there, right in front of this bush, thousands of bees, and all of a sudden, I put my hands and my fingers go in 
like this deep. And I just take them all and I go, whoosh. and you want to know what happened? They flew everywhere. They were flying at my head. They were sticking all over my leg. They were running all over the place. And then I just sat there with the bees all over me. And over time, they all retreated into the hive. And those bees are still with me. They're in the hive. They were just out yesterday because it was 50 degrees. So the thing is, is that, yeah, I could have been terrified. I could have been fearful. And I was a little fearful. And that was part of that. But I chose to stick with it. I chose to embrace it. I chose to change my relationship to it. And as a result, I learned something new. I'm more comfortable if they, if I ever have another one of those come up in my house, I'll have more information on what to do with that. And what I'm trying to say with this is not that you guys should all go out and go find a swarm of bees and do this for yourself. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that you're going to come across things in your life that are unexpected and strange, and our response to that in the moment is super important. And so reflect on that. What does that look like for you? What does that look like for you in your daily life? Like I said, oftentimes it looks like running towards the awkward. I know that most of us myself included, hate sticking out. But some of the best learning happens when we put ourselves at risk, when we try something new, when we take that chance to do something with the unexpected. So think about, and maybe this is a point of discussion since we have a little bit of time. What do you think running towards the awkward looks like for you? What is, a, uh, what is a case that's in your life right now where you can run towards something that might feel, feel strange or unexpected? I'm going to give you a, a minute to turn to your neighbor and maybe share one thing. Go. Thank you for your willingness to share whatever you shared. I, won't, I hope there was some good conversation there. It sounded like it at least. Okay. So to connect this to my work, I work with youth and young adults who have disabilities. And most of them, if I was to talk to them or have them here, would say that they often feel like the strange person in the room. They often feel like they show up in spaces and they feel like the exception to the rules. So one thing that I have really worked hard to try to cultivate in myself and try to encourage other people to do is to recognize that in otherness or in strangeness or in the unexpected, there is something to learn about our collective ethic, meaning who we are as human beings. And what that requires from all of us, all of us have a responsibility. That responsibility looks like being open to the unexpected. 
It requires us to engage with things that feel strange to us. It requires a capacity or meaning like the ability to enter into conversations, honest conversations that might be uncomfortable. I have a lot of those. And in all of that, in that openness, in that engagement, in that conversation, I am learning a lot about who I am, but I'm also learning a lot about who others are. And as a response to that, we understand over time, because of all those things, what it means to be good, what it means to be just, and what it means to promote peace. So while it's easy to run away, while it's easy to be fearful, I think that if we want to be, as a community, because I think justice is a pretty big deal here, correct? I got one thumbs up. That's a big deal for us here. And how we start to do that is to enter into these things that we just talked about. As people of faith, whatever faith that is for you, I think we're called, we're called to recognize what freedom we have in our choices. And what we do with those choices matters. So if you have a person who's a neighbor who you've never talked to, or if you have a person who just comes to you, is across to you as strange or weird, or if you're in a relationship that's in conflict, I encourage you to run towards that. Because when we do that, we love others in a way that is compassionate, that is just, and is in some ways treating ourselves with the respect that's necessary, right? All relationships are mutual. And that back and forth, that, that back and forth, that love between is not only about loving the other, but it's about loving yourself because we can only learn about ourselves through other people. That's what I think kind of the message of Jesus is trying to teach us. So if you need some sort of application, I have Ephesians up here to kind of connect you to that. So that was the first bell. I'm going to close this in prayer, but I really want to encourage us as like a kind of a go-to. Think about how engaging in the strange and unexpected can alter your understanding of goodness, of justice, and of peace. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be together today. We recognize that this world is full of unexpected and strange things. We, we ask that you teach us continually to look at those things as opportunities to grow and to learn and to become better people. Help us to see the goodness, the justice, and the peace in the strange and the unexpected. In Jesus' name, amen. And I guess I get to say, you're dismissed.